This is Geometry Lesson 9-8, Making Polyhedra and Other Surfaces. Before we begin the lesson, I would like to define a polyhedron. It's a three-dimensional surface that is the union of polygonal regions, its faces, and that has no holes. So if you think about the figures that we have studied thus far in this chapter, we talk about pyramids and prisms. They're a combination of rectangular lateral faces and a polygon base for the prisms or a triangular lateral faces and a polygonal base. Those are all called polyhedron. We also have regular polyhedron in when this in this situation all of the polyhedron have this or in the polyhedron they all have the same shaped face and same size. So all of the um, faces would be congruent to each other. You can see the different tape, um, types here. We have a tetrahedron, a cube, an octahedron, dodecahedron, and an icosahedron. I found a link to some software that will help us show these different polyhedra, the regular polyhedron, in a in a more um, so you can see all the different views. Here I have a tetrahedron, so it's made up as you can see of triangles, and all four triangles here are um, congruent to each other. So it's got four different faces, all triangular. We've studied the cube quite a bit, so I'm going to skip over to the octahedron. Octahedron is really made up of triangles again, all being congruent, but this time it's got eight faces. If you look at it kind of from this view here. I can get it to do it. You can see it's almost as if you have two square pyramids put together to make the octahedron. Then we have a dodecahedron, dodeca being 12. You can see this has 12 faces, and all of these faces are pentagons. You can see all the different views of this. And then an icosahedron is made up of 20 faces, and these are all. Uh, triangles and all congruent triangles here. And you notice one thing that I didn't point out before that all of these faces, this is a regular triangle, so it's an equilateral triangle. When we looked at the dodecahedron, this is a regular pentagon, so all angles and all sides are equal. When we look at the cube, that's made up of regular a regular quadrilateral that we know as a square. And the tetrahedron, once again, triangles, but they're all equilateral. So not only are all the faces themselves congruent to each other, but the faces are, in fact, regular polygons. The next part of this lesson is to take a look at making nets for our prisms and our pyramids. I have uh, found another link to a website that shows us some different types of prisms that we have studied, and it talks about what a net for those prisms are. So I'm going to start with a triangular prism. Here I have one. You can see it rotating around here. And when we look at the actual net of the triangle prism, so it's a triangular prism, so we have the two bases. And as you watch this unfold, you'll see that the lateral faces will open up, the two bases will come down and you'll see a flat two-dimensional sur two surface. And as you can see here, these are my lateral faces. Notice they are rectangular in shape and there are two, two bases. I'm going to play this one more time so you can see how it comes back together. There's my base one, base two, and then there's the wrap up of the two more lateral faces, so the three lateral faces in all. Let's take a look at the rectangular prism as well. We also know that as a box. Here you can see the it wrap up. All the lateral faces wrap around the two bases that we had here. And let's take a look at the pentagonal prism. And you can see it wrapping. I'll have it go one more time. I'll have you sh show you this view. You can see the base, and this is the other base, and there's my one, two, three, four, five lateral faces. You can see wrap up again. And I'll do one more, the octagonal prism. Here, I'll stop that right before. Um, you can see, as you can see, the octagonal prism floating around here. You can see it's got two octagons for its bases. 
and then it's going to have eight lateral faces as you can see this unwrapped version of this one two three four five six seven eight those are our eight lateral faces and then here are my two bases so this whole strip here is one big huge rectangular lateral face but it will wrap around each of the sides and these rectangles will be as tall as the height of our prism For this last section, I'd like to take a look at some nets for a triangular pyramid and a couple others. Now we know with pyramids we have a polygon for a base and then our lateral faces are our, our triangles. Here I have a net for a triangular pyramid. You'll see this um, animation come open so you can see the flat surface. So here it is. It's going to open up. Each of the layers are going to peel open and then you will see the net for that. So there's my triangular base and each of the lateral faces that are open flat. Let's take a look at that with the pentagonal pyramid. Here you can see there's the pentagon for the base and now all the lateral faces are going to fold up to come to the apex of the pyramid and there you have your pentagonal pyramid. It has isosceles triangles, as the lateral faces because this was a regular pentagon. And so that's what our pentagonal p um, pyramid will look like. And we're going to make some nuts in class. I would like to take one last look at some cylinders. Here I have an example of a net for a cylinder. As you notice, we have our base, this is our circle, so we have two circles and then we have our lateral surface that is a big rectangle. I, it always reminds me of a soup can label so when you take the label off of a soup can, soup can if you wrap it up or unwrap it you get a, a larger rectangle so the, the length of that rectangle represents the perimeter of our circle so there we have the, the length of this rectangle would be pi times d and our height of our cylinder would represent the height of the lateral face so there would be I could find the area of this by h times pi times d. We're going to explore these nets a little bit further when we get into lessons 9 and 10 because we're going to be using these nets to find the surface area and the lateral areas of our cones, cylinders, prisms, and pyramids. When you get to class we'll work on these two activities. We'll do these activities in class and make these these nets for these uh, the pyramids and the cone and cylinder. This concludes lesson 9-8.